Okay guys, welcome back. Hope you had a little break. Um, I want to talk about a couple more formulas. It's this average voltage formula and also the instantaneous voltage formulas. Okay, so if we look at it here, it says E average is equal to E max times 0.637. I'm going to write it down right over here. E average, okay, it's going to be E max times 0.637. Three seven. Now, what the heck are they talking about there? Average voltage. Well, it's different than the effective voltage. You can see the multiplier is different. And uh, what the average voltage is talking about, guys, if you recall, is it is calculated when you've done some rectification. Okay, because the average voltage is also the DC voltage. Okay, guys? Average is always DC, and in fact, if you take your digital multimeter and you select DC on it, it is going to be calibrated to calculate the average voltage, okay? And so, how is this thing AC? Well, you've done some rectification to it, okay? So you've taken this, you've flipped it up, up to the top, now it's direct current, okay? And so, basically, you take this business right here, here's the DC voltage if it was a straight line, a battery okay here's the effective voltage if it's a sine wave well what if it's a DC wave okay so in other words what if I do it like this Whoop. same thing okay that now it's DC full wave bridge rectifier and it's got the same resistor on there okay and this thing is 12 ohms and this thing is maxing out at 170 volts but it's full wave bridge rectified, you know, what is the DC voltage here? Well, you can calculate it using the formula E average is equal to E max times 0.637. Now, I think the textbook says 0.636, okay? Who cares? Same thing, okay, guys? So don't, don't sweat it here. Let's calculate the average voltage for this system right here. It is 170. It is the voltage that is peaking at, you know, right there, boop, times 0.637. Now, if we calculate that, let's get my trusty calculator in here. 170 times 0.637 equals 108.3, okay? 108.3 volts. What that means is if I take this AC voltage, 120, run it through a full weight bridge rectifier, then measure it with a DC meter, 108. All right, it's gonna be 108 volts DC. All right, guys, and that's what the average voltage is. So, just to review these two formulas, well, peak or max are the same, okay? It's gonna be that. Effective, RMS, just straight up AC, all the same. If I say the effective voltage is 120, the RMS voltage is 120, or just the voltage is 120, we're talking about effective. All right, guys? Now, if I say the DC voltage is 108, or 200, or any other value, I'm talking about the average voltage. If you see average voltage, guys, it means someone's done some rectification. All right, guys? Because there's no such thing as the average AC voltage. It is the DC voltage. So I say the DC voltage is 12. We're talking about average. Okay. The DC voltage is 200. We're talking about average. If I say the average voltage is 160, we're talking about the DC voltage. And if you put your meter on DC, it's going to measure average. And if you put your meter on AC, it's going to measure effective. All right, guys. And I know it's a lot to kind of try to tra take care of. Now, from level two, guys, you learned other formulas for average voltage because this formula actually only works for full wave rectification. I've taken this and made it into this, okay? But you could also do half wave rectification. And if you recall, with half wave rectification, you typically do it with one diode. You just blow this negative alternation away here, okay guys? And so you've got uh, you've got uh, this basically, waveform. Sorry, tongue-tied there for a sec. 
okay, if you do halfway rectification. And in that case, the average voltage would be the max times 0.318. It's exactly half of this, okay. But, uh, you know, your, your electronics teacher is going to get all wound up about that. I'm not, okay. When I talk about average voltage, it's, we're going to assume that it's always full wave, whether it says so or not, okay. So we're always using this formula in theory. In electronics, you'll have, you know, multiple formulas for our average voltage, okay, guys. But for theory, don't sweat it. One formula, just calculate it, be done with it, okay, guys. All right. One more thing. And that is this other formula, the last one that I want to talk about. And that's this crazy one right here. E instantaneous is equal to E max times the sine of the angle. Now the instantaneous voltage, it says EIN, stands for E instantaneous voltage. Now, if you recall from level two, the instantaneous voltage is, well, you know, zero degrees, it's zero here. At 90 degrees, it's, uh, you know, 170, let's say. Okay. But what about 30 degrees? What about... 31 degrees. What about 41 degrees? What about 45 degrees? What's the voltage there? And you can calculate that using that formula. E instantaneous is equal to E max times the sine of the angle. Whoops. Okay. So, you know, this is 90, let's say, guys. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know, this is 180, right? 120 degrees so what's the instantaneous voltage is what is the voltage at that instant okay what is the voltage at 120 degrees we know that the peak let's say is we're going to go with this 170 here so let's calculate it for a second e instantaneous is equal to e max times the sine of the angle all right guys now the max we said is 170 the angle is 120 we can just actually hammer that into our calculator okay 170 times sine 120 it says it's 147.2 volts okay guys so all that means is at 120 degrees, the voltage coming out of the machine at that instant is going to be 147.2, okay? And you can calculate the instantaneous value anywhere along the 360 degree sine wave here using this formula right here. Now, a couple of things. You can definitely measure effective voltage with a meter. Got to set it on AC. You can definitely measure average voltage with a meter. You got to set it on DC, okay? There is no way to cut, to measure instantaneous voltage with a normal meter, okay? Your, uh, this thing is changing all the time. Your meter is not going to be able to display any instantaneous values whatsoever. They are going to be calculated if you want to calculate them, okay, guys? And you also can't measure the max or peak-to-peak -peak voltage with a multimeter, right? You can look at them with a scope, okay? But you can't measure them with a digital multimeter, all right? They are going to be values that you can calculate if you measured the average or the effective voltage, I guess, but you're not going to be able to measure them uh, with a regular meter. And that's why we have scopes, right? So we can see the peak and all the other details of the waveform. The last thing I want to say about these formulas here, guys, is, uh, you know, we've been talking about the AC sine wave and that is a voltage sine wave, but, uh, you know, what about the current sine wave? For, so, for example, if I took... Uh, this guy right here, <clears throat> this 10 amps here, and uh, you know, what's that gonna look like? Well, the current in the circuit is gonna follow Ohm's law. So if the voltage is zero, uh, the current's gonna be zero. And uh, as the voltage screams up, uh, the current's gonna scream up. And then as the voltage peaks, the current's gonna be peaking and it's gonna do the same thing on the way down and over here. In other words, if I have a sine wave as the voltage the current will also be a sine wave if it's a, you know, resistive load, right? And we'll, we'll worry about uh, other loads later. But all I'm trying to say is in every AC circuit, if you have a sine wave as the voltage, you will have a sine wave as the current. And because the current is a sine wave, it's going to follow all the same rules, you know, as the voltage. In other words, you can substitute the E for an I 
in any of these formulas and calculate what's going on with the current sine wave. All right, guys? So just wanted to make that clear because some of the homework questions are probably going to refer to currents and just know that current is the, follows all the same rules as voltage when it comes to the sine wave. So that's all we're going to uh, do for right now, guys. And the homework I'm going to assign is going to be uh, unit one handout two. Okay, which is going to be a homework assignment that gets you to calculate max, instantaneous, and average and effective values on both voltage and current sine waves. Okay, and then maybe next week we will take a few of those up. Okay, so have a good one, guys. See ya.